What's up, everybody? This is part two of Aria Alicia's live interview for our Everything Black series, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start over with sharing the live with as many people as possible. That's the first thing you do when you come into our lives. Um, and then we're gonna get started in just a few seconds. Share, share, share. Share, share, share. Okay, what's up, family? I see y'all in here. Arya, you, you can go ahead and send your request again. Hey, Miss Tunji. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're back. Okay, we're back. <laughs> we are back. Okay, so when we ended part one, we were getting into you talking about how you are a word of mouth person when it comes to networking, which um that's something a lot of people don't talk about either. It's like everybody isn't meant to just perfect social media as soon as possible. Like that's definitely mm -hmm. something that you have to learn as an entrepreneur and um yeah i feel like i'm not sure how we met <laughs> i can't remember i don't i don't remember i know that it was, i don't know if it was like maybe in the lab or something it might have been like in the lab or like you know just in morrison coming from class or yeah i really wish that i could remember a lot of my great friends that i do have I don't remember like how I, I don't remember either, but yeah. I do remember that when I saw you, I can't remember where I saw you. I don't know what it was, but I was like, she will be a great host. I just remember saying that <laughs> because you know, when you, you, you naturally talk to people, like you naturally can talk to anyone. Um, and, it's just like your your energy is so strong that a lot of people just like easily take to it. So uh, that was one of my first say, statements. Like, I think she'll be a, a perfect host. And that's how, that's why I wanted you into the Sound on the Hill. <laughs> um, with that being said, how has Sound on the Hill impacted your creative journey? I would definitely say Sound on the Hill. My Sound on the Hill family has created my um excuse me, has impacted my creative journey just by teaching me how to really network and how to really work the room once I enter the room and to um, just make as many connections as possible when it comes to just being a creative overall because we're all going after the same thing, success when it comes to our creativity. And we're all so passionate about our creativity. I would say that Sound on the Hill taught me to just network and just, you know, the meaning of family, like Sound on the Hill is a family, like yeah. just our, you know, with our members and our supporters, like Sound on the Hill taught me to just go get it. <laughs> and I'm super grateful and appreciative for my Sound on the Hill family because I have grown as a creative, as a host, as an individual, period. What's, um, what's something that What's something that happened behind the scenes that you feel like you would, you could share with our audience? <laughs> <laughs> so I've been with Sound on the Hill since, um, I want to say January 2018, like at the top of the new year. Yeah. So we were like a year in. Yeah. So I knew, you know, I knew who Sound on the Hill was when, you know, when we started in 2017, when it was just like Bobby Channing, you, and uh, it was a couple other members too. Mm -hmm. I I did, you know, noticed that I was like, okay, it's cameras, it's it's all types of stuff. I'm like, you know, they they got it all together. But girl, once you get backstage and when you get behind the scenes <laughs> and you start experiencing some of the mis I've had I've had a couple of um interesting artists or creatives you know interactions <laughs> with people behind the scenes yeah <laughs> <laughs> like what i would say just people 
kind of stepping out of bounds and kind of going how can I say this um <laughs> not staying in their lane just kind of uh okay. overstepping their boundaries I would say that has happened a few times um another thing that's happened is I hate when the mics cut out the cameras cut off yes the lives in like <laughs> the music stops the music like <laughs> cuts off like I'm like oh my goodness I see yeah. some people coming in here. Okay. Thank y'all. Hey, family. Um, Thank y'all coming in. This is part two of our interview with our family member, Aria Alicia. If you missed part one, it's saved on the page. So definitely be sure to go back and watch that. Um, yeah, behind the scenes can get really rough. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it doesn't even happen on purpose. It just... It happens at the moments where we least expect. It happens in the moments where things are going so well, and then yeah. drama. <laughs> I think I think what we've learned as a family the most is how to work under pressure. Like I feel like we all know each other under pressure. Y'all know how I get. <laughs> Don't talk to me. Just let me be dramatic. Let me get over. Let me get over it and. Then we can get this show. Yeah, right. then we can come right back. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so tell me, in what ways do you use your brand to empower Black women? Ooh. I love, you know, when I when I sell my products to somebody, the confidence mm -hmm. and like the glow that I see my clients get just from holding my products, I think that's very empowering in itself because. You know, sis, when you get out of the shower, I want you to wake up. I want you to take your bath, your shower, put my products on, smell you, be like, oh, I smell good. I yep. look good. I feel good. That's empowering in itself right there because my products just, they're, they're a vibration. They make you feel good. Do you feel like it's a difference uh, with Black women and Black men um, when it comes to products and just pushing a brand? Absolutely, definitely. Um, because I feel like we're more cautious with what we put in mm -hmm. our products and how we form formulate and how we curate our uh, recipes. And we're just more conscious and we're more aware of what's going on our skin. Okay. So tell me, is there such a thing as a perfect skincare routine? And if so, what is it? <laughs> I would say... I'm very simple with skincare. I've always been simple. I think the perfect skincare routine is a natural soap. Um, I like to use rose water, just pure mm -hmm. rose water. I get it from the international stores. I drink mm -hmm. it as well. So I kind of like spray a little bit of that. Um, I use a light oil and like a light shea butter. I do use my products, my body butters on my face. But I'm, I've learned that my skin really loves just plain shea butter or plain mm -hmm. cocoa butter. And that just gets me going. People compliment me all the time on my skin. And I'm like, my skin routine is so simple. So I feel like simplicity is the best skincare routine. Nice. Okay. Miss Tunji said, I feel like a million bucks with your products. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's how I want everyone to feel. So I have a couple more questions. Um, if you are on this live and you want to ask Aria your own personal question, there's a question mark at the bottom of the screen. Tap that and type in your question, and I'll be able to pull it up for Aria to answer for our Q&A. Okay, so tell me, are there any expectations for 2022? Like, what do you want to accomplish? Mm, I'll... This year, I, I just feel all the abundance and all the prosperity and all the success. And yeah. I know that's pretty cliche when it comes to, because, um, you know, everyone's like, oh, it's a new year. It's new. I genuinely feel all of that about to mm -hmm. prosper. And I feel like my business is about to take off. What's today? Two, two, 2022? Yep. <laughs> today, I'm a firm. That, my business is about to soar. It's about to fly, and I just, I'm super excited and grateful to see what's coming up. I know I have a lot of creative projects I'm trying to do for my brand, 
Um, mm -hmm. I've officially started my doula services. So, um, congratulations. To, thank you so much. Um, I'm trying to just do everything that I'm passionate about when it comes to my brand this year. And it's really mm -hmm. looking like a me season. I love it. Yeah, this year just feels different. I don't know. It does. It feels great. It feels different creatively. It feels different when it comes to just all everyone's artistic projects and everyone's artistic ideas. Like, it just feels like it's about to be a booming year for all creators. We're making a comeback. Most definitely. Okay, so tell me, what does, when you hear the phrase, everything Black, what does that mean to you? Everything Black, everything melanin, everything glowing, <laughs> everything money, everything just successful Black. Our skin is Black. Just Black, <laughs> all Black everything. That just, Black just means luxury to me. Yeah. Everything Black. That's just luxury in my eyes. I love it. Okay, let's see. You already have a question. Queen Kiani asks, uh, you always you always are so lovely and peaceful. How do you maintain your peace? That's a good question. Thank you so much. Um, I maintain my peace by creating boundaries with people, things. Um, I meditate. I pray a lot. I write. I listen to music. I don't take ish from anybody. Um, <laughs> I maintain my peace by choosing me. <laughs> <laughs> and I talk to God a lot and I just maintain my peace by just staying grounded yeah thank you Kiani <laughs> does anybody else have any questions if you do tap the question mark at the bottom of the screen and we can pull up your question are there any things that you would like to say get off reveal anything um i just want to say thank you to you especially for just keeping me pushed motivated during this um interesting season i will say for me um like i said it's looking like a me season and right now i'm just all the love and the support is just really keeping me going and so i definitely appreciate you for that and sound on the hill is just everything <laughs> it says, and I appreciate it. what is some advice for college students with a business that's a good question that's a great question um advice for college students with a business I would definitely say try to create that balance um when you get out of class and when you're not doing assignments try to work on your brand work on your craft um create as much as you can um don't let don't let the stress of school try to get you in the way of your passion. Just when you have some downtime, definitely put your all into your business. And it's create, gonna a foundation. You. create a foundation. Because I feel like I feel like when you when you get out of school, you're gonna see a lot of things. You're gonna see a lot of black businesses that are, you know, trying to make it. Um and it kind of makes you feel like you need to rush. Yeah. But I don't think I don't think that's the case. I feel like spend as much time as you need to build your foundation because your foundation is uh is gonna that's what's gonna carry the longevity of your business, your brand. Absolutely. I definitely agree with that. And just find your niche, find what works for you. Don't worry about what everyone else has going on. Just kind of find your center and be present that's a good question definitely because when we started we were just we were chaotic just doing what <laughs> doing whatever <laughs> doing whatever we could think of and then we we got it together though we had to do drills all type of stuff definitely you had to had to work some of the kinks out and try to um just practice just for, you know, things. And I'm grateful for those drills because sometimes we run into some interesting <laughs> scenarios. <laughs> so those drills definitely helped. 
What would you say the, the craziest scenario that we ran across? I think when people get on here or when a person in the past um, has gotten on here, you know, smoking, drinking, um, cursing, you know, not really keeping that professional um, <laughs> setting, <laughs> not keeping it professional. I think that that's probably been the craziest thing that I've seen. Um, let it sound in those highlights. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, those highlights tell it all. <laughs> Absolutely, they highlights they tell it all. It. Definitely. Um, but yeah, the the drills definitely help because you just never know what type of person you're going to be talking to on here. Because a lot of the times we don't know the artist um which is why we created the application because the application gives us a little insight on who you are as a person as an artist as a brand and then it just makes it easier to talk to you um Absolutely. and uh yeah you want to represent yourself on camera how you want to represent your brand so Definitely. you have another question What's the best way to brand yourself and figure out your market? That's a good question. A great question, Biz. I appreciate that. Um, I would definitely say you are a walking billboard for your business. And I tell people all the time, I don't care where you're at. Tell somebody what you do. I'm a walking yeah. billboard for my brand. Like I said, when I walk into a room and someone compliments me on my skin or, you know, how I smell, I have my own brand. Would you like would you like my card? Actually, I'm having a sale tomorrow. Would you like my Instagram? Like I just have to make sure that I promote and advertise and just let everyone know what I'm doing and what I have and going on. You also carry your samples too. I do. Um I, <laughs> I carry a bag. Anytime I have a purse, I have one of my products in there. Mm -hmm. And I just let people smell and I let them test. And they're like, ooh, I need some of this. I'm like, yes, sis, get with me. Okay, sir, uh, get, on your, get on my website. Get some for your girl. Get some for your woman. Get some for your lady. Get something yes. for you. Like I said, I have a men's line, fellas. <laughs> yes. Definitely and the beer comb. The billboard. Beer comb. <laughs> Definitely. Keep that beard intact. Yeah, okay, so what um how do your prices range as far as your product um my prices range from what's the lowest product i have i would say starting from eight dollars up to about 25 but prices are about to increase because i feel like i'm low-key lowballing myself and mm -hmm. the price is going up because the product is selling the product is high demand yeah. So I'm definitely about to increase the price for sure. Well, you know, you got a customer out of me because, like <laughs> I said, it's become a necessity. Especially, um, talk about your mocha because you know it's everything black. So we got to talk. We got to talk about. Oh the yeah, mocha. how could I forget about? <laughs> how could I forget about my chocolate body bliss? Um, the chocolate body bliss is is real chocolate in yes. there. It's real cocoa in there. Um, the essence that I use for the oil is real. Um, it's really kind of edible, actually. <laughs> I wouldn't advise just eating it. <laughs> Munching on it. <laughs> but it's definitely edible. Um, that's my favorite product because I like to smell like chocolate. I, like to, I just feel like yeah. that product alone is just everything black. Yeah, and it melts into your skin, too. Definitely. Okay, does anybody else have any questions for Aria? If you do, tap the question mark at the bottom of the screen, type in your question, and we'll be sure to pull it up. I think my nerves left now. Oh, now they left <laughs> at the end. <laughs> I think my nerves are finally gone. You know, this wasn't, a, this wasn't as nerve-wracking as I thought it would be. Cause it's nervous for me to interview you and Jared too. Like, really? Um, yeah, cause I really have to think about what am I, what am I gonna ask y'all? I really be want to call y'all and ask what y'all want me to ask you. <laughs> but I tell no, people, I'm, uh, I'm just I'm open to 
I'm open to whatever. I'm an open book. I'm very transparent when it comes to, you know, what I talk about with anybody. I'm very transparent. Of course, I'm a private person as well, but I'm going to let you know. If you ask me, I'm going to let you know the best way I can. Let's see. <laughs> How do you make your body butter? Christopher <laughs> asked this question. <laughs> this so there's, there's a few different ways that you can make body butter. My personal way is... I don't like to melt a lot of my stuff. I like to just let it naturally. It takes a while, but I like to just whip my things as, and, you know, do it as unprocessed, or, not unprocessed, but as natural as possible. Some people are like, I can't do that. Uh, that that takes too long. But personally, yeah. I like to sit there and wait and be patient and wait for the body, but it to just start to whip and start mm -hmm. to turn into greatness i see my mom here <laughs> so i like to just put my all all my energy and my positivity into the into the butters um that's my personal way that i like to make it and i like to take my different butters and mix them with my oils my scent and that's, that's how it goes you can melt them all down and wait four and a half five six seven hours for it to you know solidify or you could just do it with the no heat method like how I do. It's just personally, you know, your preference. Nice, nice. Okay, does anybody else have any questions for Aria? What type of events do you want to see this year? This year, I want to see more events for... Mm, definitely more R&B events. Definitely more poetry events. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just like straight poetry, just everyone just, I want to see some. Everybody some, just spin on the mic. <laughs> yeah, like I, I want to, I want to see more poetry events for sure. Like last year was definitely a hip hop year for us. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I love hip hop. I value hip hop. But I definitely want to see more R&B and poetry events for sure. I do too, and you've been you've been very open with your poetry this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> say it again. I say you've been really open with your poetry lately. Definitely, um, just coming out my shell. I've always written poetry. I've just kind of keep kept it to myself, kept mm -hmm. it a secret, I guess you can say. But um, I'm coming out my shell when it comes to performing. And I'm I'm still trying to find my flow. I think yeah. working on my flow is what I'm definitely gonna try to combat uh, when it comes to my poetry, so I can be more comfortable performing. I love it, and it just comes over time. Definitely time, and just not being afraid to get on the mic. Cause sometimes you know people like anybody want to get on the mic, I'll be like. And it's funny because you're a pro on the mic. Like, as far as hosting and everything goes, like, you'll grab the mic quick. But I guess because it's it's more intimate, it's more personal. Definitely. Um, it's it, People look at my poetry and be like, girl, what? You went, what you went through that? And I'm like, you, you know, I just like to express the thoughts that run through my mind. I like to put them on paper. And I like to just express how I'm feeling and, you know, words and poetry. That's just like my outlet. But sharing with people lately, I'm like, I don't know, but I'm I'm definitely not stopping or holding back any of my gifts this yeah. year. Definitely not. Thank you. Talk some about the studio mixer because you were a vendor at our um, event that we're starting this year. I love the studio mixers. I yeah. love the studio mixers because they're so intimate. But at the same time, it's a lot of people that come through. Like, they just come through in batches. And I've met yeah. a lot of people from outside of the Huntsville area, especially, you know, who live, like, in Decatur and Athens and different mm -hmm. places like that. They're like, yeah, this is dope. Like, people are definitely vibing with the studio mixers. And I love that I could just set my products up on that small station yeah, just, you know, I think it's that's like a cute little area. I've been enjoying just 
you know, enjoying my intimate time with everybody. Yeah. So I think we're definitely doing fun. definitely doing another one. I might drop the date tonight. Okay. We're gonna <laughs> see. Um, but that's definitely gonna be an event we're gonna continue to do throughout the months of twenty twenty two. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, last call for questions. If you have a question for Aria, click the question mark at the bottom of the screen, type in your question, and I'll be able to pull it up for her to answer. Let me see who else can jump in here real quick. <laughs> Let's see. What are you expecting from this uh, this series for February? From this series, I definitely want to. I want to see more business on, like more black business owners. Yes. coming on here getting interviews because I feel like we don't get a lot of just business owners. We get, of course, you know, we have a lot of artists and creatives and mm -hmm. you know things of that sort. But I want to just. I want to interview some of these businesses that that haven't gotten a lot of time to just really showcase their creativity. I definitely want to see more black owned businesses for sure. Yeah, I feel like the artists kind of like really took over the page and it didn't happen <laughs> like purposely. It didn't happen purposely. It's just like they're coming out of out of ev everywhere. Every state, every city is it's crazy. Um, but I definitely miss getting back with the business owners. I want to do that soon. Okay, what are you dropping? When are you dropping a new product? Um, okay, so I'm, I'm dropping products, some Valentine's Day products tonight. Um, I'm dropping, I'm working on the spring collection as we speak. I have two yes. products, two products just two that I'm doing for the spring. I'm not going to overload. I think that the spring going to be pressure because I'm talking too much. I'm not going to say too much, but okay. the spring, yeah, two products are dropping and I'm super excited and I'm starting on that now. So I, it can be perfect because, you know, I'm a perfectionist. I know nothing <laughs> is perfect in this world, but I try to get things as perfect as I can because it's my brand. It's my baby. And so we working, we working on that right now. I love it. What's up, humble? Miss Tanji said I'm gonna fill out an application. Mm. Yes, Miss Tanji, definitely do that. Definitely. Um, if you are an if you're an artist, a creative, or anything, and you're on here right now for the year of 2022, we're doing a special on our interviews. It's just twenty two dollars. Um, all you have to do is fill out the application in our bio, make your payment, and then we'll personalize some questions for you. You'll get an hour on live with us. Um, you'll definitely get time to showcase your brand, do a giveaway, whatever you want to do to promote your business. We're going to give you that opportunity for just $22. Take advantage, y'all. Yes, I want to see more women, too. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, the sure. last time. Next month is Women's Month, so we got to show out. Yeah, we got to get some women in here. We got to show out. Okay, so um, if you have a question, because I see some new faces in here, if you have a question for Aria, ask her now. Click the question mark at the bottom of the screen. Type in your question, and we can pull it up for her to answer. Y'all can ask whatever. I'm, I'm open. <laughs> Anything appropriate, of course. <laughs> I'm excited. Are you excited about what Sound on the Hill has curated for this year? I'm not going to say too much, but it's a lot, huh? <laughs> yeah, the people, the people better know that it's coming. It's coming hard this year. Yeah, we got some stuff coming up. Um, yeah, I just, I just want everybody. The main, the main objective is to be creative. That's the main. I I always say that I love I love the rawness of of uh, performances and things like that. I love when people can naturally come together and just network. I want to see a lot of that this year, you know. Which I love. I love going to 
you know, the different shows and stuff we have in the city as well. But I just want, I just need that intimacy this year. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I definitely agree. Just more unity and more everyone just loving on each other. And yeah, we just doing, our, doing what we got to do. Thank you. Thanks, mom. <laughs> Okay, so I'll give you, I don't give everybody the opportunity to do this, but do you have any questions? Ooh. <laughs> I would love to interview you, CC. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I would love to interview you and, and definitely ask you some, some creative questions for sure. But okay. I think a, que a, a question for right now would be, is Sound on the Hill going to branch out and reach more cities this year? I definitely want to do that. Um, yeah, I feel like we're going to travel more this year. Um, I feel like we've touched the bases. We touched all the bases of Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we still got to go to Montgomery. We yeah. Hit Birmingham. Um, but as far as our algorithm right now, we've we've covered the bases of Alabama so I definitely want to see more talent out there like what's what's in the different cities what type of food you know I, I want to get into that too I want to get us to start food blogging and stuff like that absolutely I think that's gonna be dope I think that's gonna be dope for sure ATL we definitely gotta go back to Atlanta because what yeah. it's, it's been two years since we went to an event? Yeah, it actually has been. It actually has been. I definitely want to, um, you know, show you around my city and, you know, show you some uh, some of the spots. I think yeah. I think the food blogging will be dope because Huntsville and, you know, the surrounding areas, they open up a lot of good spots. You know, I'm a foodie, so I'm going to go find out what the what them menus is looking like. <laughs> Yeah, and I even had fun when we went to Mobile too. You know, because oh yeah, for sure. I that haven't. Nice. I wasn't able to be in like I didn't grow up, well. I haven't been in Mobile as an adult. Yeah, so I would love yeah. to just like I definitely I'm definitely visiting home more this year. I will say that absolutely, and I enjoy I enjoy the the food and the experiences that. That I had while we were down there. Yeah. It's dope. Met a lot of good artists. Yeah, the artists are dope. It's artists everywhere, but I think we need to bring it back more equal as far as artists and business owners. Because it's sure. just the scale is like this right now. Like artists and business owners, it's like, I don't know. For certain. I definitely agree. Slutty Vegan. Oh, I, I really want to go to Slut, Slutty Vegan. I can't see the comments anymore. You can't see them? No. I can't okay. see the comments. Y'all, if y'all have questions for Aria, definitely click the question mark at the bottom of the screen. I don't know why I'm holding you on here like this. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think that... I don't know. I guess it's because I'm not used to just being on this side of the camera. Yeah. I'm used to being in your seat. So it's like, it's different when people ask me questions because I'm always asking the questions typically. Um, have you ever thought about having your own storefront? Definitely. That's like a dream for me is to have my own store to operate and service to people. Would you have it here in Huntsville? I would. I feel yeah. like Huntsville, I would have it here in other lo uh, several locations. The, here, one back home, I would put one on the West Coast, one okay. on the East Coast. I would definitely have stores everywhere. For sure. That's definitely all. Okay, you got a question. What are some challenges you face as a startup? How do you overcome? 
Who asked me that? I love that question. Who asked that question? That's I think that's Paige. Okay, you said some startups. Yeah, um, what are some challenges you face as a startup, and how do you overcome them? Challenges, I would definitely say. Um, you know, sometimes people tend to, not on purpose, but they, they might tend to compare your brand to other people's brand. Um, I always say, you know, there's a hundred brands of bread in the bread aisle. I right. definitely say whatever separates you from other people, um, just trying to find that balance and find that thing that does separate you. That's definitely been a challenge, but I feel like I've worked through you know people like I ain't never smelled certain things that you have and I've never smelled certain <laughs> scents I think creating scents that other people are not creating yeah. are definitely what set me apart and that's I feel like I've overcome that for sure nice Kiani asks what motivated you to become a doula that's a good question I love babies I, I love the babies. I love children. I think wanting to assist our Black women has been yes. my number one motive for wanting to be a doula. Mm -hmm. um, let's be real. In hospitals, you know, they, they don't treat us the greatest sometimes. So I feel that giving Black women the ultimate experience while they birth, <laughs> and then being that advocate and being that support system postpartum, which is super important, a lot yeah. of people forget about postpartum. I think that's what motivated me the most. Like, okay, I just want to help our women. And I love it. I love it here. <laughs> Has it been difficult for you to adjust to learning or is it coming naturally? It's definitely come naturally. Um, you know, with me already being an herbalist, I kind of know like, certain things that help assist the body in general but just learning that aspect of just pregnancy and like just the mother going through all of that has definitely been what's what i'm sorry Keanu, Keanu just but she said i want you to have my next baby <laughs> <laughs> oh no I, I think i think i like being you know assisting women with their um their journeys, uh -huh. um, you know, one day, you know, one day I'm going to have my own journey. And of course, I'm not going to be my own doula. I mean, who knows? I might. But um, I just like helping others. Yeah. Definitely. It, it, it brings joy to my heart. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so what would you tell somebody who wants to do what you do? Like, how, what's the first, what are the first steps? As far as being a doula, being just in the holistic being, community. Really being a creative in general. A creative in general. Yeah. I would say, I would say just start, start looking at content and things that inspire you. Mm -hmm. I think inspiration is the biggest part of being a creative. It's just being inspired in general and just having that support from other creatives and linking up with other creatives. Most definitely. Okay, Aria, I want to thank you for doing this interview and being the first person for our Everything Black series. All Black Everything. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I appreciate you so much, Cece. I really do. I appreciate, I appreciate you too because you know we we like we said behind the scenes is is definitely a different world and I feel like a lot of people don't really get to see that the that side of either of us like right it's crazy so um to see where we started and to see where we're going is just it's amazing to witness and just to see y'all grow and start y'all own businesses like that's that's dope to me you know just to see y'all have y'all babies <laughs> <laughs> right i appreciate that because y'all have definitely been here with me with my business from the very beginning like the very first testers the very first people to actually you know support 
my creative endeavors for sure. Yeah. So I definitely appreciate Sam on the Hill for that. I love it. I wish I could see the comments. I can't. Oh, uh, hey, Kadisha. Kadisha just got in here. Hey, big. I wish I could still see the comments. It's okay. She said she got it. She got up too late. It's okay. All right, big. You we gonna stay back. alive. Um. Yeah, I'm excited for everything we have this year. Before we end the live, I will like to say again that we do have a $22 special going on for our interviews. Um, this month is our Everything Black series, which is completely full. Um, Ooh, okay. <laughs> it's, com it's completely booked. So, um, yeah, definitely click the link in our bio for the month of March. Um, sign up, you get an hour with us, 10 personalized questions, in addition to our Q&A, because, of course, we like the audience to talk to our guests as well. And you can, you know, promote your brand as much as possible, however you would like to promote your brand, by either rapping, singing, dancing, you know, doing a giveaway, whatever you feel like you need to get your brand out there, we'll give you that opportunity during your interview for just $22. I have one more thing. I do have a soul food sip and paint coming up this month to celebrate two years in business. Y'all get y'all tickets on my event bright link. It's in my bio. I will send it to Sound on the Hills DM so that you can post that link. Get y'all tickets, fifty five dollars. You get soul food. You get my face. You get vibes. <laughs> you get music. <laughs> a paint kit. Yes. We're going to have some poetry, perform. It's going to be dope. So I really want y'all to come celebrate with me. $55. And that Love is it. on Sunday, February 20th at Humanity Studios. Nice. All right, all right. I'm going to let you go. Um, okay. if, you, if you missed the live, be sure to go on our page and say, um, I'm going to have it under the series and everything. So definitely go back and watch this. Thank you guys for being on here um, and turn your post notifications on so you can catch our other interviews. Absolutely. Thank you, sis. You're welcome. Thanks, All right. Peace, y'all. Wait. <laughs> what? Wait, you got to come this. Christopher said, where's my soap? Who said that? You can't see the comments. Who said that? Christopher from um from choir. Chris called. <laughs> I got you. Just just call me. Just call me. <laughs> just call me. Look, and, oh, before we go, I feel like there's something about your products. People don't people don't ask you for your products. They they want to know where they at. They 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 demand the product. They they're definitely <laughs> demanding because I know I'll be demanding like Aria. I don't have any more body butter. It's I my money you. and I need it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Peace. Um, thank y'all for coming. This is part two of Aria's interview. Definitely check out part one. Thank you for being on here. No problem. <laughs> I love y'all. Love you. <laughs> All right, peace. Bye.